Hi, I'm Andy. Thanks for watching. This video, we're going to talk about how to diagnose a failed control board on a GE side by side refrigerator. There's actually going to be several different videos. This one will cover the fan motors your evaporator fan motor, which is inside your freezer, and your condenser fan motor, which is behind your refrigerator by the compressor. To gain access to the control panel, which is behind your fridge on the right hand side near the bottom, you'll need a quarter inch nut driver to remove three bolts there. And once you're inside, you'll need a multimeter to perform the, the voltage test and also continuity test that we'll be performing today. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, guys, here we are behind the refrigerator. By this point, you've removed your access panel to your control board by removing the three quarter inch nuts. Set that aside. Please use caution. Don't touch anything on the control board. You should have your refrigerator plugged in at this point. What we're going to do is test the voltage coming into the control board, making sure that uh, the power supply is good. So for this test on our multimeter, we're going to turn to volts AC. It's a V with a wavy line over it. Take your black lead, insert that where the orange wire is on this plug being careful not to touch anything else. Do have live voltage here. Take the red lead, touch it to the first pin on this blue connector. Should have a brown wire coming into that. Also, you should be reading roughly 120 volts. If that's the case, you do have good power coming into your control board. If your refrigerator does have good power, 120 volts, the next step is going to be to leave a refrigerator or freezer door open for three minutes. This will put the control board into what's called linear protection and it will run both fan motors for us for our next test. Okay, so for this next set of tests, we'll be taking a look at the J2 plug and it's this plug right here. You can actually see marked on the board right next to it, it says J2. And while we're talking about these, this is pin number one, two, three is where the white is. Yellow and black is four. Solid yellow is five. Six is blank, seven is blank. Number eight is red. For this series of tests also, we will need to turn our meter to volts D, C. And what we'll do for this test, go ahead and put your black lead where the white wires come in, it's number three, and then red where the red wires are. Now if your board is functioning correctly, it should be supplying voltage to the fan motors uh, somewhere between 12 and 14 volts. Mine, as you can see, is all over the place. 0 volts, 1 volt, 2 volt, 3 volt, and certainly not 13 volts. So if your board has failed this test, uh, it's a bad control board. Okay, so for this next series of tests, we'll be testing for voltage from the control board to the fan motors. Take your black lead, put it in pin number 3, should touch the, the white wires. Take your red, red lead and put it in pin number eight where the red wire is. Now your meter should be reading, if your board is acting appropriately, should be reading between 12 and 14 volts DC. Mine, as you can see, is just all over the place, somewhere between zero and three volts. This is a failed control board. so. If yours looks similar to mine, or it is not producing between 12 and 14 volts DC with this test, your board is not sending voltage correctly to the fan motors, and you have a bad control board. Now the second test we'll do, we're going to make sure that the board is sending voltage to the evaporator fan motor. So you're, you should have passed test one at this point, which means that you add between 12 and 14 volts between these two pins. What you can do is still leave your black lead in that spot number three where the white is, 
And then the very next pin over, yellow and black, spot number four, put your red lead. Again, it should be measuring between 12 and 14 volts. If it is not, your board is not functioning correctly by sending voltage to the evaporator motor. Okay, to test the condenser fan motor, similar to our other test, make sure your refrigerator is plugged in. Your meter is set to volts DC. You'll take your black lead, put it in the neutral. That's where the white wires are. Take your red lead, put that to where the yellow wire is. And that's uh, pin number five. You should read between 12 and 14 volts. If you don't, you have a failed control board. Okay, for the next series of tests, you'll want to make sure that your refrigerator is unplugged. Once it's unplugged from power, we're going to remove the J2 plug from the board. Do your best not to pull on the wires as you might damage the harness. Rather grab it from the sides if you're able. This test will help us determine if we have a failed fan motor, um, either evaporator or condenser. Typically it's going to be your evaporator fan motor that has caused damage to your control board just because of moisture infiltrating the, the housing and whatnot. So for this test, turn your meter to the ohms of resistance test. Place your black lead on the white wire, your red lead on the red wire. You should read between 1.5 and 3 ohms, 3K ohms of resistance. So between 1500 and 3000 ohms. And mine is way low. So you can see there's an issue with my fan circuit. Just to explain briefly, once you've unplugged this wire from the control board, these wires uh, go directly to the fan. These white is your neutral for the fan motor. This is your power supply. But the yellow wire is your condenser. White and, excuse me, yellow and black is your evaporator fan circuit. Just as a quick side note, if you're doing a visual inspection of your control board and you notice that either one of these resistors has turned brown or black, that indicates a failure of the actual fan motor and has caused damage to your control board. The one on the left is your evaporator fan motor. The one on your right is your condenser fan motor. So depending on which one you see burned, uh, you will also need to replace the corresponding fan motor to go along with the board. Hey guys, I wanted to give you a quick explanation on what the four wires do on one of these motors. Uh, they're fairly complex, uh, but we're gonna focus in, this is an evaporator motor. Probably looks similar to yours. You have a white, which is common, blue, which is tachometer, it basically sends an RPM signal back to the control board. The yellow wire is a signal wire. Think about that as uh, essentially it tells the, the fan how fast to run. And then red is gonna be our supply voltage, typically 12 to 14 volts. Looking at the evaporator fan circuit, I wanted to show you that the yellow and black wire that we were looking at on the control board actually changes colors to yellow right here at this plug. And that's what that little symbol means. Little two lines it means there's a plug right there, a connection of some type. So it starts at the board is yellow and black. Follow that line. And then there's the connector changes to yellow. That's our signal wire. This blue RPM wire, tachometer essentially. We won't cover that in this video, but there is a way to test uh, if your meter has a Hertz or frequency setting, you can actually uh, confirm that you are getting a RPM response from this motor back to your control board. I hope that helps. You know what? Why not include it on this video? Uh, so these fan motors, uh, their variable speed. Um, as I mentioned, the blue wire is a tachometer. I'm going to show you just a quick test that you can do with that. 
if your meter happens to have a Hertz HZ setting, you may have to hit a um, secondary button to get to that function. But yeah, these motors are called what's called pulse wave modulation. And that's essentially what that yellow wire does is the, uh, the signal wire from the control board is a pulse wave modulation. And that's how it dictates what speed to run this motor at. But it needs a tachometer feedback from the motor itself, which is that blue wire. So the board makes decisions on how to faster run it based on what the RPM is. Here's how you test it. The black wire, excuse me, your black lead will go to the yellow wire. Your red lead will go to the blue. Then at that point, just give your motor a spin by hand. The faster you spin it, higher that number will go. So if you get that response, you know your, your tack on your motor is working. Hope that helps somebody. Okay, so I wanted to get you a tight shot of the J2 connector and just recap the test that we've done. This test uh, would be with your fridge plugged in, so use caution not to touch anything except with your meter leads. You'd have your meter set to volts, DC, the black plug, goes into your neutral, which is the white wire. Your red lead goes into pin number eight, where the red wires are. You're, te you're testing supply voltage to the fan motors, so you should be getting between 12 and 14 volts DC. The second test we did, again, leave your black lead where the white wires are, and insert the red lead where the yellow and black wire is. This is supply voltage for your evaporator fan motor. So if your board is doing its job, it should be sending between 12 and 14 volts here as well. Third and final test we did. Again, the black stays where the white wire is. Put your red lead where the yellow wire is. This is your condenser fan motor supply voltage. Should be between 12 and 14 volts DC. If it is not, your board has failed. I hope this helps somebody. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already done so, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot. And if you did have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comment section and I'll get back to you.